the program manager. <laughs> you either want me to eat something or you want me to get closer to the mic. <laughs> okay. Um, and I like to start any talk about invasive species by centering us uh, with a sense of place um, because any discussion about invasive species doesn't make sense without thinking about the place where we are. And of course, here we are on the big island, which is actually quite a small drop in the huge Pacific Ocean. We are 2,000 miles away from any nearest continent, and we're a bunch of lava that boiled up out of the ocean. So how did living things manage to end up on this island? You hear people talk about native species. Why are people so obsessed with native species? Well, especially in Hawaii, these things are extra super duper special. Um, we, when we go into classrooms, we talk to kids, we talked about wind, wings, and waves. That's how the ancestors of all of our species got here. They had to cross over 2,000 miles of ocean via wind, wings, or waves. That's a pretty tough, that's a tall order for any organism to make, and it didn't happen very often, because even once they got here, they had to figure out how to live, and then they had to mate. You know, an animal could arrive here and live a perfectly happy life and die without ever reproducing. So only once, about every 35,000 years, did a species actually manage to arrive in Hawaii and naturalize and become part of the ecosystem here. So you can imagine, any time a new thing came in, it was the new thing every 35,000 years, had some time to adjust to the space and, and for the space to adjust to it. Um, if you remember your high school evolution class, you know, biology, um, we talk about, the textbooks all talk about Darwin going down to the Galapagos Islands, and he found those finches, right? That's what helped him build the theory of uh, natural selection. And those finches, there were 13 species descended from a single common ancestor. In Hawaii, he would have flipped his lid. We have one honeycreeper species that arrived about several million years ago, 52 species evolved from that single bird. And across all of our taxa here, we have um, plants, insects, fungi, all kinds of stuff where you see similar really high adaptive radiation, just amazing um, just evolution of species from, from single ancestors. So our Hawaiian native species are very special. What starts to change? Well, humans. Humans arrive, and we like to bring things with us, right? Things that we like. And the first humans who arrived brought some stuff with them, mainly agricultural crops, right? Because you gotta bring food to eat. And those were our first introduced species. And there's about 35 species of plants that we call canoe species because those were brought over on those first va'a um, by the Polynesian settlers. And those are still around today. And for about 1,200 years, those original 40 or so species of plants and animals were the only new introductions that were coming in. But things really start rocking and rolling in the 1700s when uh, whaling became the oil and gas of that century. That's where you're gonna make your fortune was in whaling. And so you have a lot of traffic uh, once you have Western contact in Hawaii and you have a lot of European uh, whalers coming over to make their fortune. So with them comes a lot more stuff. So we really start to see a lot of introductions. So what does that mean? Well, it could mean nothing. So back then, there wasn't a concept of invasive species. You could go and get a little cute fruit tree called a star fruit, and you bring it to Hawaii, and you plant it in your backyard. And we do that today. We have a star fruit in your backyard. It makes some fruit. Wherever you plant it, it stays there. It's not taking over the rest of your garden, right? Same thing, strawberry guava. If you ever get to go to Brazil and you see strawberry guava in its native habitat, it's a short 12-foot little orchard tree. It looks nothing like the monster that we have here. So... Some things are just fine. You bring them, they behave, and some things go wild. Um, and that's, it, it's 10 to 15% worldwide in island ecosystems, which tend to be more vulnerable. It's more on that 15% side. And about 1% of introduced species will absolutely just be monsters that are going to destroy. So um, we have introduced species with a subset that's kind of uh, the naughty ones. So that's actually codified, by the time people started really realizing the impact of this, that's actually codified into federal law in 1999. So a lot of times people say, oh, well, you can call anything an invasive species if you don't like it. And that's really not true. There is a, a federally defined definition. 
Um, invasive species, are the first half of that definition is it has to be something that's not native to the area. So just because it's something that you don't like in your yard, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is an invasive species. It has to be something that is not native to the area. And it's very easy to define that line in Hawaii because we're an island. Um, and then the second part of the definition is that it has to cause harm in at least one of three areas, the environment, the economy, or human health. And after this was published in 1999, the, the state of Hawaii adopted a similar definition in 2000, and they added way of life to reflect that in Hawaii, we have unique cultural and lifestyle aspects that could also be interrupted by invasive species. So um, you, know, you can kind of see environmental, uh, economic, and human health harm. For those that don't know, the semi-slug is the main carrier of rat lungworm disease and probably why Hawaii is the hotspot for severe disease in the world. Um, lucky Hawaii, we are so vulnerable to invasive species that if you look at, this is a list of the world's 100 worst put together by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. You don't really need to see all of the things on there to see all the highlights I put on there. We have more than 50 already here in Hawaii. Um, there's one up there that's green. I like that one because it's the only one that's native. It's an aquatic plant that's native to Hawaii invading elsewhere. So we poked back. <laughs> okay, so this is not just a historical problem. We are dealing with all these historical introductions that have come in, but this is a, this is a problem that's happening now, today, and it's actually increasing because we're having more stuff coming than even back in that 1700s with those whalers. There's only so much they could fit on their ships, but we have cargo ships now bringing in containers. So a 2002 study, so this is probably um, actually kind of under undercounted, estimated we were getting one new insect arriving in Hawaii every day. So think about we went from one new species of anything every 35,000 years 35 or 40 species for about 1,200 years, and now we're getting just in insects, one a day. Now, are all of them gonna survive and reproduce? No, probably not. The estimate is about 17 per year. That is still a huge number. Which one of those are going to become invasive and cause harm? We don't know, and we don't know until we start seeing the harm, which sometimes is already too late to get rid of it. Live plant imports in 2015, the US Forest Service did a report looking at what are the most likely pathways of pests and diseases coming into Hawaii, and it was live plants and live plant materials. By far, they used the words by far in the report. Um, you guys already know this. You know this story because you're affected by it every day. And you have experts here to talk about this, so I'm not going to go deep into that. But, you know, coffee leaf rust was all around the world until just a few years ago. We knew it was out there. We knew there was a chance it would get here. And yet, we're still in doing live plant imports that, that carried a risk, and sure enough, uh, we got bit. So this is really important to think about. Um, in, the, in invasive species, this kind of breaks down. It's, it's a complicated field. There's a lot that goes on. But this you can apply at every scale, from your backyard all the way up to the, the island, to the state, you know, um, to an entire region. And basically, when you look at this across time, and then you look at cost, which is going up this way, right, what you see is that prevention is by far the cheapest. Keeping stuff out is going to be their, your best bet. So the more money that we can put into prevention, the better. Currently, the state of Hawaii has 71 inspectors at the airports. The Department of Ag handles airport inspections. 71 for the state, for the entire state, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. There's only 71 people inspecting tons and tons of cargo that are coming into Hawaii. Less than 2% of all cargo is inspected. Right, so we have a serious biosecurity issue um, in Hawaii. So once you, something, you know, things come through, you want to find it early. And so that yellow bar, that's where my team works in a lot of, uh, mostly with plants. We're trying to find things that are still able to be eradicated. But if you think about this scale, like in your backyard, right, you're trying, you're checking when people are coming onto your property with equipment. Is their equipment clean? Does it have soil? Does it have vegetative matter on it that could spread stuff onto your property? When you're bringing plant material home, you're putting the peanut butter sticks in to check for fire ants, right? Making sure you're not bringing stuff. That's your vigilance, your biosecurity. So at the state level, we're trying to do the same thing. Once something gets through, find it early and eradicate it. But by the time some, you start noticing stings, when you're like, oh my gosh, I'm getting stung by fire ants, 
you are already in this state, public awareness. And that is kind of already well into almost management. You might not be able to really get it back, right? That's what happens on the island. By the time people start to notice, oh, something's wrong, we might be past the eradication stage already. That window slams shut, especially with insects, really quickly. And then you're here. You're in this point of no return where it's management ongoing forever. And you're experiencing that already with the invasive species that you're dealing with. Um, even just in the last 20 years, things that are coming in that are affecting agriculture. We have our Queensland longhorn beetle on the east side, which is attacking cacao. And we have the two-line spittle bug, which is destroying ranching pastures. So this is probably the most existential threat to ranching that's ever hit Hawaii. In fact, the county of Hawaii did a survey, you might have answered this back in 2021, asking producers, what are the factors that are most limiting to the work that you do? And if you look, that green bar is invasive species. The one right below that, plant diseases or pests. So number one and number three that producers were reporting are their biggest problems. And in, these are synonymous. In Hawaii, it's synonymous. There are very few native diseases or pests that are causing impacts on agriculture because most of our agricultural crops are introduced. So those pests have to be introduced as well. Um, but we, we see this as being the number one problem, right? So real quick, I'll wrap up by talking about what we do. Um, we are part of a very big network of people at all different agencies and all different levels working on the invasive species problem. Um, we're just a tiny piece. But as I said, most of our work historically has been in uh, environmental plant uh, invasive species where we are trying to work in that yellow bar where we're trying to find things early and eradicate them before they become the next horrible uh, invasive plant that's gonna take over, right? We also work with rapid ohia death and some other plant species like albizia. And we do a lot of work with the community and community training. So um, we work at the airport. Sharon, earlier, if you were here for that talk, she mentioned uh, coconut rhinoceros beetle. We, along with some other agencies, there are a few high profile uh, pests. We work at airports and ship ports try, with traps and lures trying to see if we can catch these things early. So for some pests there is uh, some early detection that's actively going on there. But that has to be funded every year by the way. Every year they're searching for funding for this. This isn't a standard program that you think, oh that's an obvious program Hawaii should have. It's not. <laughs> We've only, it's only been in existence for five years. So um, one of the, if there's one tool I can give you that I would love for you to use, because I know, you know, everybody's growing coffee, but I'm sure you also like to plant and put pretty things on your land. We have this tool, plantpono.org, and this is something that I want everybody to be using, because this is going to help you find a plant that's non-invasive um, for your yard. And the thing, the reason we need this is because there are very few laws in Hawaii to prevent the importation of plants, even if we know they're going to be invasive, even if we know they're going to be a host for a, an invasive pest. We haven't updated the noxious weed list in Hawaii since 1992. So, you know, Sharon's got her plate full, but <laughs> there's a few things going to be coming from us in an email to her, um, you know, saying, hey, man, it's time that, w that we get on this. But that's a great tool to use to voluntarily um, be able to try and find a good plant. Um, we also have a community support program for little fire ants. So if you work with your neighbors and you want to get together and treat little fire ant as a block, um, we'll come out and we'll do a personal training with you and help you get on a training schedule. And we'll even bring some free stuff and some free treatment. So this is worth, if you have a group of people in your neighborhood that are um, good neighbors, you can reach out and we'll be happy to talk to you about that. Um, we also, especially over COVID, we did a heck of a job building up our, our video library. So if you have something specific about invasive species, because the work we do is so broad, um, we're trying to put as much information here as possible. So we have this great YouTube page with lots and lots of videos and webinars and all kinds of stuff that you can learn about um, various uh, species and what other groups are doing. We like to host guest speakers sometimes to talk about their research or talk about um, the work that they do. Uh, finally, um, Sharon mentioned, you know, legislation that's going through that they're trying to put through. The Hawaii Invasive Species Council has put together a list, and I can't even show this list. It's so long it would like go through the floor. Um, 
that is specifically for bills that impact invasive species in some way or another. And that's the URL, it's a little hard to remember, but you could probably Google DLNR, invasive species tracking, and you'll find it. But if you could take the time to sort of look at what's out there in, that's being introduced, Hawaii has a, a biosecurity plan that was put out in 2017. Huge pieces of it have still not been implemented. There's a, there's a ton of information that um, is in that plan, important things that we could do to improve biosecurity in Hawaii that have yet to be done. And the more your voices, especially as farmers, as agricultural producers, the more your voices are heard, the more the legislature is gonna pay attention to that. Okay, so that's um, my spiel. Here's our uh, website, bis.org. We, we have a strong social media game. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, please follow us. Um, and you can email me or you can email BISC in general at biscuithawaii.edu, and we'd be happy to help you. One of the things we offer is um, pest and plant identification. If we don't know what it is, we'll find the expert who knows what it is. We do a lot of emailing around. Does anybody know what this bug is? Send us a picture. If you find something weird, you're the eyes and ears. Send us a picture, and we will find out what that thing is for you. So we really try to generate a lot of reports from the public, and we appreciate your help in that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.